Hey guys, welcome back to the dark tube and today we'll be deviating from the norm where I normally do math videos. Today I'll be doing the mathematics school based assessment outline as proposed by the CXC examination board. So let's get started. So the CXC mathematics outline is paper one is 30% A grade, paper two is 50% A grade and paper three, which is the SBA or the alternate paper is 20% A grade. Now this video is focusing only on paper three. So the structure of paper three, which is the school based assessment for most persons, you have the project title, which is one mark, the introduction, which is four marks, and that includes the, ta um, the table of contents. Part three, the method of data collection, that's two marks, presentation of data, five marks, analysis of data, two marks, discussion of findings, two marks, conclusion, two marks, and the overall presentation is also two marks. So the total amount of marks that you can attain is 20 marks out of 20 marks. So each mark is worth a percent. All right, so for the title of your project, the title of your project has to be clear. That means it has to be easy to perceive, understand, and interpret. It has to be comprehensive means it includes everything that is necessary or everything that is relevant to what you want to accomplish. It has to be a real world application, something that actually exists. So you can make something up and expect persons not to know that it is made up. So it has to be a real world problem. Yeah. So where can you get ideas? So you can get ideas from your home. So are you building something? Are you buying something, etc. School, buying lunches, you can get from attendance, extracurricular activities, etc. From your community, for example, your preferred mode of transportation from pers for persons in your community. Politics, voting, all of that. Issues within your country, crime, poverty, no jobs, etc. Issues within the world, coronavirus. Coronavirus is here, it is now, you can get a lot of um, topics from Corona, inequality, etc. So these are some sample project titles. The first one is, does it take more time to type on a laptop computer than on a smartphone? I'll actually be doing a sample SBA on this topic, and this is an experiment. So the method that you'd use to collect the data for this is, in, is an experiment. Another one is, how long on average does it take to be served in the school's canteen? You can use a questionnaire or a survey, but a survey will be more effective because there's not a lot of questions that you'll be able to ask. Um, how does the location of a store affect the prices charged? Again, you can use a questionnaire or a survey. Does running on a curve take longer than running the same distance on a straight? That you can do observation or experiment. An investigation into the pros and cons of higher purchase. This you'd have to probably go to, let's say, courts and get the brochures and compare and contrast prices to get the pros and the cons. Again, guys, these are sample project titles, but these are titles that have been exhausted. So don't even think about using these again. CXE has seen these questions time and time again. They don't want to see it anymore. So think outside the box, think creatively. So for your introduction, your introduction includes your table of contents. So that's one mark for your table of content. Your objectives, are to be clear. Why did you choose this topic? Why did you choose this title? It has to be comprehensive. So what do you hope to achieve? So in order for you, get, in order for you to get all four marks, you have to have all of these. Method of data collection. So your method of data collection, you have to state the method and you have to state it clearly. So if you're doing an experiment, you have to say that I'm doing an experiment, X, Y, and Z. The data collection method is clearly described. So you have to tell them what you will be doing in your experiment, for example. So you have types of data collection. So you have interviews, observations, experiments, questionnaires or surveys, and you have researching documents. The most famous ones are usually experiments or questionnaires and surveys. So when you're thinking of your project title, think of what method you can actually use to accomplish it. If you can't think of a method, that means your project title makes no sense. Think of something else. Then we have analysis of data. 
the analysis must be detailed. Now, here you are applying statistical and logical techniques to condense the data that you collected. So again, your data collection method is mainly for you, so you are supposed to be interpreting what you collected and presented. So you're basically recapping or evaluating what you did. And here, if you use any formulas or types of calculations, you must put it here in your analysis. Here you also compare and you're contrasting all, all that you found. Then you have discussion of findings. Your discussion of findings must be clear. You have to interpret and describe the significance of your finding. Explain any new understanding that was discovered. So you might have in your mind what you expected to achieve, but you probably achieved something else. So you have to discuss your findings. So you have to tell or explain what is happening. Then you have your conclusion. Now your conclusion must be based on your findings. It has to be clear again, and you must relate it to the purpose of your project. So you have to carry it all together and conclude. So then for your overall presentation, it has to be logical. It, it has to have the correct grammar. So all the persons who are not good at English, your English is critical here, even though it is a math SBA. Then you have to ensure that your entire project is organized properly. When you, when you say organized, it means that it is easy to follow and understand. I shouldn't be looking all over the place trying to understand what you have in there. It should be easy to read, smooth and flows effortlessly. So let's go into a sample SBA project so that you can actually see what is happening. All right, so now we're going to actually do look at a sample SBA. So this is your project descriptors that we basically did what your project should have. So we have the project title, introduction, method of data collection, presentation of data, analysis of data, discussion of findings, conclusion, overall presentation, which I did earlier. Now, for example, look at the presentation of data. It says data is accurate and well organized. So if it is accurate and well organized, you'll get the full two marks for that aspect. However, if the data is presented but not well organized, you might you might get a one mark out of the two for that aspect. Then tables and graphs included, correctly labeled and used appropriately, you get the full two marks. However, if you did just include if you just included the tables, you get one out of the two mark. And accurate use of mathematical concept, you'll get a mark for that as well. Just to break down the project descriptors for you. So now we can get started to the actual SBA. So first you have your cover page, which has mathematics school-based assessment at the top. You will have a picture whether relating to your project title or just something math related to make it look nice. Then you will have candidate names, candidate numbers, if you're working in groups or if you're working individually, you will just have candidate name and candidate number. Then you'll have your school, your center number, your teacher's name, the year you're doing the examination and the territory meaning the country you're from. So whether you're from Jamaica, Barbados, Trinidad. Then you have your table of content. So your table of content is worth one mark. So your table of content has to look presentable. So here, you realize it has project title on page one, introduction page two, collection of data, three to four. Then it has data presentation five to eight, and they tell you what they will have. They have table, pie graph, bar graph. Then you have analysis of data, discussion of findings, conclusion. That's for your table of content. Then you have your project title. Now the project of now the title of this project does it take more time to type on a laptop computer than on a smartphone? So whenever you're doing your project title, it should either be like a question or a statement that you're trying to find. So you could say like an investigation into something or how long does it take, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Then you have your introduction. Now again, your introduction has to be clear like we did it before. So here it says the student researchers realize that of recent, some persons have been typing documents on their smartphones as opposed to their laptop computers. 
as smartphones are more portable. The objective of this project is aimed at finding out whether persons type faster on a laptop computer or on a smartphone and whether there is a significant difference between the time rates. So this is detailed, it gives you the objective, it's descriptive, all that is required. Then you go and ensure that you number your pages as well for organization, for your overall presentation. Then you have the data collection. Now it says this SBA group consists of three persons. So three persons are in this group. Each person was given the same paragraph to go into their community to carry out an experiment. You realize we, we basically stated, we explicitly stated what method you are using to collect your data. With five different individuals, each having a total of 15 individuals being used. Now, whenever you're collecting a data, if you're doing an experiment or like questionnaire, etc., you have to use at least 15 persons to give it a range. You can't be using three or four persons. That doesn't really give you enough information or enough data to do your discussion or to present, etc. So use at least 15 persons. You can use more because 15 means 50 or more. Yes. So each individual was given the same paragraph to type on both laptop and on their smartphone. The task of typing on both devices was, was timed with a stopwatch, recorded and analyzed. So they're telling us what exactly was done in the experiment. So then they gave us a sample of what the paragraph was. So this is this here is what the paragraph each person was given to type on their laptop and on the smartphone. Then a table. So the table used. So they give you a blank table showing the names, the laptop computer in minutes and this for the smartphone. So you put the person name here. You put the time that it took them to do for the laptop computer and the time it took for the smartphone. So you just want a blank table so that you know what you're actually using. Again, it's good for your overall presentation. Then, when it came to the presentation of data, they had a table. So this is a table that they actually filled out with person one, person two, and they have the time frames for each. And they did it for 15 persons. Then they calculated the average, which is the mean time. So the average mean you're calculating all the times and dividing it by the amount of persons that you experimented. Then they had diagram one. So here you realize that the graph has a title. It has the key which tells you what is for laptop and what is for smartphone now it says graph showing mean time taken by individuals to type on both devices so again if you go back up that's what the average so you have diagram one and diagram one is a pie chart now it has its title, it says the graph showing mean time taken by individuals to type on both devices. And here you realize you have the key. So blue is for laptop and orange is for smartphone. Now, if you go back up here where they have the average, that is what is called the mean. So this here is what the pie chart is about. So now they have diagram two which is a graph showing the times taken by each person to type on the laptop versus the smartphone. This is more of a comparative graph as opposed to a bar graph, but it's fine. So again, it tells you that laptop is in blue and smartphone is in orange. So for person one, it shows you the laptop time and it shows you the smartphone time. Then we come to the analysis of data. So again, for your presentation of data, you don't need to have a lot of graphs. Because if you have a lot of graphs, your, your analysis will take you a long time to do and you're only getting two marks for the analysis. So you can do about two graphs and a table, that's fine. So now for the analysis, so the data shows the average time taken to type on the laptop computer as opposed to the smartphone. The mean time spent typing on the laptop was four minutes and 15 seconds. 
while typing on the smartphone only took three minutes and 24 seconds. So now we have the analysis of data, which you're analyzing or recapping what was done in the presentation above. So now it says the data shows the average time taken to type on the laptop computer as opposed to the smartphone. The mean time spent typing on a laptop was 4.15 minutes, while typing on the smartphone only took 3.24 minutes. So you're comparing the times. This indicates that typing on a laptop is more time consuming than typing on the smartphone for the average person. There is, however, an abnormality in the data presented as the data for person 13 shows a change in the flow of information where person 13 typed faster on the laptop than on the smartphone. So again, is an abnormality or an anomaly. So person 13 typed at a rate of one minute and nine seconds on the laptop, but spent one minute and 37 seconds typing on the smartphone. When compared to the other persons used to collect the data, person 13 is the complete opposite from all individuals, because while other persons typed at a faster rate on the smartphone and a slower rate on the laptop, person 13 typed at a faster rate on the laptop and a slower rate on the smartphone. So based on the data presented in the table above, it is observed that person five took most time typing on the laptop compared with a time of eight minutes and 40 seconds, as opposed to person 13 who took at least, took the least time typing with one minute and nine seconds. Person seven with a time of five minutes and 50 seconds took the most time typing on the smartphone while person 14 took the least time typing on the smartphone with a time of 1 minute and 21 seconds. So if you see here, you see comparison, you see contrast between the types of typers. So on the laptop, on, on the laptop, you got the higher, the, on the laptop, you got the person who took the most time and the shortest amount of time. On the smartphone, you got the most amount of time and the shortest amount of time. And you, it's a lot of comparison and contrasting of what is happening, showing you what was in the data collected. However, it can be concluded that person 13 took the least amount of time typing on both devices, and person 5 took the most when compared to the other 14 persons. Then we go down to the discussion of findings. The table shows that the times taken to type on the laptop are longer than the times taken to type on the smartphone. During the 8th, 7th and 6th minute period, typing on the laptop had one to two persons typing in these times, time zones, while typing on the smartphone had no one recorded in these time periods. In the 5th minute, typing on the smartphone recorded the highest number of persons typing in this period. However, typing on the laptop had, had its highest number of persons typing in the fourth minute, with the most persons typing in the longer time period on the smartphone, and typing on the smartphone had a shorter time period when its mean is calculated, suggests that the remaining number of persons types at a faster rate than those typing on the laptop. Therefore, persons generally type faster on smartphones than on laptop computers as there is a marked difference in the mean time taken on the smartphones as opposed to typing on the laptop. Then we go down to the conclusion. So the conclusion don't, don't, doesn't have to be anything long. You're just relating your project title to what you discovered. So it has been proven that typing on the laptop has longer time periods than typing on the smartphone. Hence, there is a clear reason as to why there is an increase in the number of persons using their smartphones to type documents rather than their laptops. So for the overall presentation, because it was so organized and logical, I gave them two out of two for overall presentation. And as you can see, they achieved a total of 20 out of 20 for the SBA. So I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, you can type in the section below and I'll be sure to answer you.